It is a generally accepted principle that a Republican-led House will gin up a new Benghazi 2.0 investigation as a way to fill Fox News airtime and sling mud at Democrats. But the prospect of impeachment, well, we may want to listen to what Republicans are saying they're planning here. I don't know how Kamala Harris doesn't get impeached if the Republicans take over the House. Last Friday, Ralph Norman from South Carolina and I filed a resolution including impeachment articles for Secretary Blinken. It is time for action. Impeach Biden, impeach Kamala Harris, and throw in the Secretary of State if you can get him back from vacation. These are articles of impeachment on President Biden. You know, what's good for the goose is good for the gander. I said at the time, when we have a Democratic president and a Republican House, you can expect an impeachment proceeding. I'm introducing articles of impeachment on Merrick Garland. The House of Representatives needs to impeach Merrick Garland, and they need to impeach Alejandro Mayorkas, the Secretary of Homeland Security, and we need to have trials in the United States Senate on their abuse of power. Do you expect an impeachment vote against President Biden if Republicans take over the House? I believe there's a lot of pressure on Republicans to have that vote, to put that, that legislation forward and to have that vote. I think that is uh, something that some folks are considering. Wow. Wow, indeed. Barton Gelman at The Atlantic is out today with a new piece entitled The Impeachment of Joe Biden. And in it, he argues that, quote, sometime next year, after an interval of performative investigations, Republicans in the House are going to impeach Joe Biden. <laughs> Now, that is a major assertion, but Barton Gilman has been right, and he has been right early about big things like this before. In September of 2020, in a piece entitled The Election That Could Break America, Gelman reported that the Trump campaign was discussing contingency plans to bypass election results and instead appoint loyal electors in battleground states where Republicans control the state legislature. With a justification based on claims of rampant fraud, Trump would ask state legislators to set aside the popular vote in their state and exercise their power instead to choose a slate of electors directly. Does that sound familiar? Trump claiming victory on election night, Trump claiming fraud when it started to look like he lost, and Trump using those fake fraud allegations to try to stop the counting of electoral votes. Gelman wrote about the plans for all of that in September of 2020, weeks before the election. So why does he now think Biden will be impeached by a Republican Congress? Joining me now is Barton Gelman, staff writer at The Atlantic and senior fellow at the Century Foundation. Bart, thanks for being here. Thank you for having me. I mean, uh, you, every time you publish something like this, I think it sends a chill down the spine of most Americans or perhaps those watching this television show and the person sitting at this desk. You see a strong correlation between election denialism and the lust for impeachment on the part of Republican voters. Can you talk a little bit more about that? Yeah, it's, it's almost a mathematical relationship. Uh, if you believe uh, or profess to believe that the election was stolen, uh, that Joe Biden is an illegitimate president, and we know that about two thirds of all Republicans do believe that, uh, then you're either joining a militia uh, to overthrow the government, or at the very least, you want to see him removed from office. Uh, and so impeachment is, is uh, correlating very closely uh, with, with the big lie. You have actually uh, uh, 68, I think, percent mm -hmm. of Republicans believe that Joe, Joe Biden uh, should be impeached and a majority believe that he will be impeached. Yeah, you, you have a kind of if A, then B, then C, then D. If you believe the election was stolen, then at the, the end point of that is that Biden must ultimately at some point be impeached. In the same way, you talk about Kevin McCarthy, who could become Speaker of the House. Right now, does not say, at least openly, I'm going to impeach Joe Biden. But you also explain the host of various pressure points that are on would-be Speaker of the House, Kevin McCarthy. And I wonder if you could detail specifically where you think the most pressure will come from inside his caucus. Well, see, the interesting thing is I don't think Kevin McCarthy actually wants to impeach Joe Biden. Uh, the people who want to are uh, in the Freedom Caucus and uh, on the right of his uh, conference in Congress. But he has risen to where he is and uh, will if... Uh, 
Republicans win the House, rise to Speaker of the House uh, on an explicit strategy of never fighting with the extreme right. Uh, he bows to everything they ask for. And people like Marjorie Taylor Greene, uh, Lauren Boebert, some of the others you showed on screen just a few minutes ago, uh, are uh, determined and bound and determined to impeach Joe Biden. And he is going to lose control of his agenda uh, to those folks. He um, has not proven himself to be one with a um, ramrod spine thus far, and that's being highly euphemistic. And it, to some degree, it is built in to today's mo modern Republican caucus that if you're the Speaker of the House, you will ultimately pledge fealty to the far right wing of the party. Witness Paul Ryan, witness John Boehner. They ultimately acquiesced, right? But you also detail, like, the Jim Jordan of it all, which is to say Jim Jordan, who could end up being the head of the House Oversight Committee, he, you, you seem to outline a kind of battle of egos between who's going to be the, the, the face of the impeachment movement, which could be political um, mana to Republican voters. Why does Jim Jordan eventually fall in line with this impeachment plot, to your mind? I actually think that's, that's exactly the right question, and it is uh, going to be the key leverage point. Uh, it's going to be in the office of Jim Jordan, because... It's expected that he will join uh, the committee leadership, that he'll run the Judiciary Committee, which is, by the way, uh, the committee that has jurisdiction over impeachments. Mm -hmm. uh, he is therefore kind of part of McCarthy's leadership team at the moment, and so he's and he's got an institutional vested interest in making sure that uh, things go smoothly and according to plan. Uh, and he has been carefully hedging his public comments about impeachment, saying it would, be, it would need to be something that the whole Republican conference could get behind uh, before they did that. Uh, but the problem for him is he has always wanted to be right on the front line of confrontation with Joe Biden and with the Democrats. And he's lived there pretty well, I will yeah, say. He, uh, he, has, he has boxed out that terrain. Yeah. Uh, and he's not going to want to let himself be outflanked by Green, uh, by Boebert, by Matt Getz, uh, and those folks. And as soon as impeachment starts to build up any kind of steam at all, he's going to realize that if he doesn't take control of it uh, and make sure to stake his claim as the committee chair, then it's going to get away from him. And that's when Kevin McCarthy loses control of his caucus. That's when uh, he can no longer stop the push toward impeachment. The inexorable push towards impeachment. Now, people watching us discuss this might say, well, but you haven't even talked about what he could get impeached for. And what's interesting in the article is it's that, that that's the part of this that seems like it's the detail, right? It's not just, it's really not a, an academic debate over what's an impeachable offense. It's just what vehicle can we use to get to this endpoint, which is the impeachment of President Joe Biden. But let us, for the purposes of um, a full explanation and um, recitation of this article, explore those reasons why Republicans at present think they could impeach Joe Biden. I mean, you, you outline a few. There's Hunter Biden. There's immigration policy. There's Afghanistan withdrawal. There's the moratorium on evictions that was issued over COVID. And then there's Joe Biden tapping into the Strategic Petroleum Reserve. Now, I'm not a constitutional scholar, Martin Gelman, but none of those things sound like they're impeachment worthy. Is that a consideration at all inside the caucus or according to the Republicans you spoke with? So you have to look at it uh, several ways on that. First of all, high crimes and misdemeanors mean whatever Congress wants it to mean. Uh, there's no legal standard that requires that a certain threshold be passed. Uh, none of the things that they've talked about so far rise to the level of an impeachable offense by historical standards. But that may not stop them. Uh, Ted Cruz said it almost doesn't matter uh, what grounds there are. He said he'll, he'll be uh, impeached, uh, whether justifiably or not, um, out of revenge, because what's good for the goose is good for the gander. Right. If, they, if, if the Democrats uh, can weaponize impeachment, as Republicans see it, against Trump, uh, then there's no reason why Republicans can't do the same against Biden. Well, that's what this is at the end of it, right? It's revenge. And it's also, let's forget, let's not forget, the, the motor in all of this is Donald Trump and the grievance machine that is Donald Trump and the revenge fantasist that is Donald Trump. 
How much do you think an indictment from Merrick Garland is going to play into the timing on all of this and the vigor with which Trump and his Republican allies pursue impeachment? A lot. Uh, <laughs> if the if if the indictment does come, look, I don't anticipate impeachment coming uh, first quarter of the new year. Uh, Congress is seated on January 3rd. They're going to go through a bunch of investigations. Uh, momentum will start to build. First of all, the base is going to demand it. If, if the investigations find dirt on Biden, if the investigations hurt the president, uh, then the base is going to want to go in for the kill and finish the job. Um, and if the investigations on their own don't hurt the president, then they're going to be doubly interested in impeachment uh, to remove him. And the one person who does have uh, the most control over uh, the Republican, Republican caucus is Donald Trump. Uh, I, I don't want to say that, you know, one post on Truth Social controls the agenda, but if Trump decides uh, that he wants to see Biden impeached and he pushes for it uh, with the base behind him, uh, that's going to be a, uh, an influence that uh, the Republican leadership in the House can't really resist. And it's going to, I think, come down to a precipitating event. And the one you mentioned is uh, certainly a likely one. If Trump gets indicted, he has already all but threatened that there would be violence on the street. Uh, but uh, he always deflects charges against him onto someone else. Yeah. Um, he uh, was humiliated by his own impeachment. Uh, it was a wound that his ego has not recovered from. Um, he will want to see the same thing happen to his successor. Uh, and yeah, I think if he's indicted, that would be a, a, a pretty strong moment to expect it.